Well, I think our next guest can help us do that. Larry Tesler has joined us now. Larry worked at Xerox Park. Larry helped develop the Lisa, and he's now the manager of the Future Architecture Group for the Macintosh. Larry, you and others uh, at Xerox Park uh, in the early 70s had a vision about what we're going to see in the 80s, and you hit, looks to me, right on. Um, what were the steps that led us to this kind of a user interface that we're dealing with right now? Well, there was a lot that went into it. It really probably started back in the 60s with uh, Doug Engelbart's NLS group at SRI in, in Menlo Park, where they, they envisioned the uh, coming of office automation and developed a system where actually the first mouse was used. It was a mouse very much like this with three mm -hmm. buttons. But they were way ahead of their time, 20 years ahead of their time. Anyway, at Xerox Park, a few people from that group came and joined us. And the main motivation at Park was an understanding that hardware costs were plummeting. And systems with high resolution graphics, which were then at would cost $100,000 for a reasonable uh, computer-aided design system, would be coming down in price to the point where someone could have it in their living room or in their office. This was really incredible at the time. We, we could barely believe the numbers, but there they were. The time the, was when, Larry? This was uh, 1970 is when Park started. I became an employee in 73. There are visions of things like the Dynabook, for example, I guess. Oh, yeah. That uh, was almost a reality now. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we could see very much this sort of thing. And so we had this vision of workstations that had high-resolution bitmap graphics and mice and networks tying them together and laser printers and file servers and just what you see beginning to happen. Uh, people thought it would be coming around 1980, to, to about the point we are now. So we were a little optimistic, I think, by about five years. Well, what is the, what is the relationship to, between the work that was done at Xerox and the work that took off, say, in Apple with the Lisa and the Macintosh? How did that work out? Mm -hmm. But well, what happened was that our research group at Park uh, was developing a system called Smalltalk, mm -hmm. which was actually intended for educational users. I also spent part of my time working with a group that was developing systems for business users. So I got involved in both projects. Uh, around 1980, it became pretty clear that uh, Xerox was going to focus their attention entirely on a certain segment of the marketplace with fairly high-end workstations like the Star. Mm -hmm. And my personal interest was in personal computing. And there were a few others at Xerox with a similar interest. So several of us all moved to Apple and uh, brought with us this, these, uh, this inspiration to pursue the small talk work, which was well known in the academic community, but it wasn't really uh, being taken advantage of right. by any okay. manufacturers. That's interesting now that Apple is trying to move into that office automation area. Mm -hmm. Ben, yeah. what, is, uh, what do you think about the Xerox Star? Is that uh, a viable well, it's product? It's still a very much a live product. I don't, not people are aware of its history, but it has gone through five major software revisions. Uh, the pricing has changed quite a bit, and the performance is substantially improved and uh, broadened from what it was before. But its emphasis has been as a business system. So, so it's a, something we just don't really see in this market. Right. What about the future? Where, where is this thing going? What, are we, what kind of things? You, you had a good vision, uh, say, 10 years ago. What's going to happen in the next 10 years as far as this? Well, I think there'll be some improvements still in visual presentation and pointing devices. But I think the main change we'll be seeing is in the area of communications, the ability for uh, information in corporate databases to be downloaded into personal computers and actually usefully processed. The ability for people to prepare routine work to have it done for them by their machine. To have uh, what we call an agent in the machine which represents you in transactions with other individuals. Sounds, sounds like we're going in a lot of good directions. Yeah. <laughs> we're out of time. Thank you. Okay.